Oh my. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. A Kobe Bryant patch autograph Woo! number four of ten. How is it going everybody and welcome back to my channel, Kobe Cards. Yesterday we ripped a first ever on YouTube hobby box of 2001-2002 Fleer Maximum, which you see straight dead ahead of us. We ripped through all 16 packs of 15 cards and when I say we ripped through them, I don't mean we did it fast. I mean, we literally were peeling cards off of one another for like 40 minutes. Unfortunately for me, the particular stock of these cards, which maybe I should have known better just by looking at them, but they're a little bit glossy and sadly it made them very susceptible to sticking. With that being said, I am here to give you a full breakdown of how we did on the box what I would value the entirety of the cards I pulled from the box to be worth, and finally, did we come out ahead or behind after this purchase? It is a profit or loss hobby box recap in what I will be calling for this episode, was this box truly maximum, or did we just get the minimum? Let's dive in. As a reminder, starting us off, we paid $103.40 for this box. That's the target, and we have 238 cards to analyze. I'm guessing that the two packs that had jerseys in them only had 14 cards instead of 15, so that's how we ended up at 238 cards instead of the 240 you would expect from 16 packs times 15 cards per pack. Now, let's get into it. So I'm going to start with the far left columns over here, and these far left columns consist of 110 cards, that the book value, in terms of like Beckett book value, ranges anywhere from 40 cents down. And I'll give you an example. Like here we have Mark Pope, Slava Medvedenko, um, Morris Peterson. These aren't, you know, the best players, players that people likely aren't collecting. So when I valued these 110 cards... Given the condition, again, I'm going to have to talk about condition here because you just look at these cards and you can tell on the edges, the corners, even, you know, just the whiting all over the place. And let's see if I can find, uh, you know, zoom in on this card a little bit. You just see that the years and years of being together, even on this one, you look at the surface, there's just a line down the bottom of it. Let's see if that can focus. There we go. Finally got it to focus. But you can see that's like on the surface right there. That's a line straight across the surface. So when I took into account and consider these 110 base cards in this column that just really don't even have the book value anyway and aren't high name players, I literally valued those 110 cards at zero dollars and zero cents. Then we have the second column that we're going to go into. So the second column is the next 71 cards where these cards are valued in like the 50 cent range. The difference being that they're not sort of no names. They're a little bit better players. You'll see here, uh, Nick Van Exel, Sharif Abdul Rahim, um, players that have a little more value, uh, Jermaine O'Neal, people that you would know, they may have had an all-star year. They're not perennial all-stars and they're not Hall of Famers, but they had decent careers and people know of them. Again, though, I have to go into condition and I mean, I don't even know how this happened, but look at the corner, look at the surface there. I feel bad. These two Sharif Abdul Rahim cards I used as an example because I looked through and I honestly wondered how this happened. Again, though, unfortunately, being conservative, even if there is like a major, major Nick Van Exel collector out there. The problem is, if someone is like a super diehard Nick Van Exel collector, they're not going to want my crappy version of the Nick Van Exel card. They'd rather pay that dollar to get a decent conditioned one with all the supply out there than take my card, even at 25 cents. So unfortunately, we are 181 cards through, and I'm valuing that second stack again. Unfortunately, 
at zero. Going on to the third stack, which is the stack right here. So here we're sort of in like the 60 cent per card stack. A little bit better players now that have a little bit of a history. Uh, Baron Davis, Tony Kukoc, Tim Hardaway, Chauncey Billups. Maybe some of these people, you know, were an all NBA player. Maybe still not Hall of Famers, but, you know, Dikembe Mutombo. Some of them might have been Hall of Famers. Some of them might not be. They're pretty well-known names, though. Again, though, look at the condition of this. It's just unfortunately not really in sellable condition. And for that reason, even with these huge names, I put the value of that stack, and I'm actually going to value it at something. I valued it around three to four cents per card. Basically, what I'm saying is maybe I'll give someone, if I gave someone a stack of 25 cards, 25 Baron Davis for a dollar, I mean, 25 of them, someone might just be like, okay, I'll take that. Because it's so cheap. It's almost nothing. And like I said, they are somewhat relevant names. With that being said, those 14 cards that I had in that pile, I'm valuing at a total of 50 cents. All right. So we are 195 cards in of the 238, and we are at a whopping total of 50 cents. Let's go on to the next stack. So this stack right here, we are looking at more towards like all-star Hall of Fame players. Uh, Alonzo Mourning, John Stockton, Patrick Ewing, Carl Malone, Jason Kidd. We hit three Paul Pierce, Grant Hill. So players that do have a little bit more of a historical background or presence in the NBA. And again... These cards may have been 50 cent cards each without the damage. Unfortunately, with the damage, I'm putting these at 10 cents each. So 12 cards in that stack, 10 cents each, $1.20 maybe for that entire thing. And with the 50 cents from the prior stack, we're at about $1.70 now. <laughs> All right, on to this stack. So this stack is pretty much... Uh, the big name players that you would want to hit. So these are the base cards that would be worth money. You know, you've got four Shaquille O'Neal, Allen Iverson, Tim Duncan, two Kevin Garnett, Tracy McGrady, Vince Carter, Dirk, Nash. These are the players that you would want to hit and would normally have value. On their own, without damage, that stack probably goes for a dollar or more per card. Problem is, there is damage. So how do I value it? I put it at around 15 cents per card. So we had 17 cards in that stack. At about 15 cents per card, we're looking at about $2.55. So in total, we're at $4.25 now, and we are 224 of the 238 cards in. We're going to go into the rookies now. We hit three rookies in our box. The rookies were Richard Jefferson, Rodney White, and Brandon Armstrong. All of the rookie cards are serial numbered out of 1,000, which would be nice, but again, we just didn't hit the names. Richard Jefferson's really the only somewhat relevant name here, and the other two just don't have value. When rookies don't pan out, even though they're a rookie, and even though the book may say like, hey, it's worth $2, it just it won't go for that. So our three rookie cards we hit, unfortunately, like I said, we didn't get Pau Gasol, we didn't get Tony Parker, we didn't get even anyone remotely, you know, an all-star player. Um, so because of that, I put those three cards at a dollar. And really, it's because I'm essentially putting Richard Jefferson at somewhere between 90 cents to a dollar, and the other two are sort of just uh, nickel cards. So again, 425 is now $5.25. And now we are going to go into the five insert cards. We hit two big shots, two floor score, and our maximum power card. And unfortunately, more of the same. Not in terms of damage, but this is going to be more along the lines of the rookies where we just didn't hit the biggest name players. We had Anthony Hardaway, Mike Bibby, Chris Webber, another Anthony Hardaway, and our one per box maximum power was Keith Van Horn. And that's super, super unfortunate because 
And I did the math here, and you honestly won't believe my luck because the odds of not hitting an insert that goes by the name of Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, Vince Carter, Dirk Nowitzki, Allen Iverson, Paul Pierce, or Tracy McGrady. The odds of not getting a single one of those names in any of those three insert sets is about 1%. That's right. There are 99% of people or 99 boxes out of 100 would have had better inserts than that. And because of that, I valued those five inserts at around 20 cents each or a total of $1 for those five cards. So $5.25 is now $6.25. And we are down to our final six cards. So our final six cards are the ones that you can find in the back right now. We had two Kobe Bryant. Those two Kobe Bryant, one of them was in a little bit better condition than the other, but I'll pull them up here. You see that, you know, they do have pretty bad corners and edges. They're just not the greatest conditioned. This one might have been a little bit better. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Maybe a little bit better on the corners and edges. But even on the back, still significant damage here. So still significant damage. And with that being said, I valued those two Kobe cards at what normally would be $3 book value each and would sell at $3 if in good condition easily. I put them out at $1.25 each. And originally I was only going to put them like at 75 cents each or to a dollar, but I went online, I did some searches, I went onto eBay and there were listings that did sell for a dollar 25 to two dollars that the condition was similar to these. People have must have newly ripped them and it said very clearly in the description, like very good to excellent condition, you know, not near mint, would not grade, do not recommend, very upfront sellers. And they were getting about $1.25 to $2. So I'm putting mine at $1.25, therefore $2.50 for the two. And we are at about $8.75 now. Up next, we've got Michael Jordan next to the Kobe's. And Jordan would normally fetch a $10 book value. Again, same thing as Kobe. I'm not going to show you the card, but just assume the same. We put that as a $1.25 as well. Normally, Jordan would go for more than Kobe, but for some reason on eBay in this particular set, there isn't much of a difference between those two players in pricing. Whereas in book value, there's a big gap. What they actually go for in this condition is about the same. So with three cards left, that brings our total to exactly $10. We're trying to go for $103.40. We've got three cards left and we're literally at $10. So not the best, but the final three cards were right here. We've got the Richard Jefferson maximum power game used warmups or game worn warmups. And you'll see this card is actually in pretty good condition. I was happy with the Jersey cards and how they came out of the pack. You'll see no discoloration, the edges are not the worst. And with that being said, Richard Hamilton, again, similar story to the inserts. We didn't hit any of the best players. Like I said, we hit one of the worst boxes that you could possibly imagine opening when you open this product. And Richard Hamilton, I put at three bucks. So we're at about 13 bucks right now. Our next Jersey card, Grant Hill. Again, really happy with the condition on it. It's a pretty clean card overall. These were not numbered. We were expecting to get two jersey cards. Grant Hill, a little bit of a better player than Richard Hamilton. And because of that, this card would sell for about $5. So with that being said, we are up to $18 with one card left. You will see the card is turned backwards. I did that intentionally. The final card is 
This right here, maximum performance, Allen Iverson, numbered 34 out of 100. This was an absolutely insane pull. I was stoked when I pulled it. The only things that could have been better than pulling this card would have been pulling the same version to 100 of Kobe or Michael Jordan. Quite literally. The book value of this card is $25. I would have no problem in my mind right now with where the hobby is going, getting $25 for that card. So not only does it book for 25, I think I could easily get 25. There is one eBay listing for this card right now. None have sold in the past. There's one online right now and the person's asking for around $80. And that's asking, that's not what I think it's going to sell for, but a player like Allen Iverson, similar to a Kobe, similar to a Jordan, this is actually a really big superstar name. Allen Iverson has a very deep following and a very loyal following. And if the hobby continues to go up, even though I value this at $25 now, 20 years from now, if I still keep this card and it's in the same condition, which is not bad condition considering, it could be maybe $50, $75. Do I think I'll ever get my money back on this box? Absolutely not. Unfortunately, it was not even close. When I add everything together and assume, take the value of 25, which I was talking about at a minimum, now we're at about $43. So $43 versus $103 spent, we lost $60, which is more than half, significantly more than half. We lost about 60% of our value on this box. Now, because of the glossy feel of the cards, and I'll bring it up, um, this certainly isn't like a cardboard, like it certainly has that plasticky gloss feel to it. And it's because of that, that the cards stick together over the many years. So if you're looking online right now and maybe you found my video 10 years from now and you're saying, hey, I'm watching this random video that I typed into my search engine in YouTube just to see if this product was recommended, what I would say to you is unfortunately stay away. Again, if you're opening a box that's 20 years old or more whenever you're seeing this video, just assume that because of the way these cards were produced, they're going to be stuck together. So was this a maximum or a minimum? The answer is a very strong minimum. We got the bare minimum. We got, uh, we got our inserts, but they were, you know, low tier players. We got our jersey cards, low tier players. Uh, we only hit one Jordan, but, you know, we hit like four Shaquille O'Neal. Maybe if we would hit four Jordan. Still, um, the Iverson was a really nice touch. The Iverson was really the saving grace. We were at, uh, what was it, $18 before we considered the Iverson. The Iverson, I just spiked up. That one Iverson card, <laughs> I'm just going to harp on this. That one Iverson card is worth more than every single of the other 237 cards combined. So when you saw my reaction in that, opening the break video where I was like, oh, like I was genuinely excited. That Iverson is by far the hit of the box. With that said, final result, minimum. That's how we're gonna end this video. That's how we valued this box. Big, big loss. But that's okay, because we've got so much more product ahead and I'm excited to save that luck for those other rips that you see behind us. I have a feeling that those Fleer Tradition and Heritage cards are going to be a different type of card stock, not as glossy, not going to stick, and I'm super pumped to rip those for you. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you are enjoying my videos and my tribute to Kobe in general, I hope you consider subscribing so you can follow along as we continue our journey to remember and celebrate the life and career of Kobe Bryant. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time with more Kobe cards.